could tell us a little bit about your background, uh, where you grew up, where you went to college, and so forth? I grew up in Albany, New York, uh, upstate, and I went to college at FIT here in New York City and just graduated last July, so a year ago. What was your family like? Was there any uh, other artists in your family? Uh, was it Actually, yeah, my mom is an artist or was an artist. She went to art school uh, for a semester, actually, and then came back and uh, met my dad in Albany, New York, and they got married and they started a family, and he's a businessman, and she also has taken her, artist, uh, her artistry and her creative side into a professional business for herself as an interior designer. So she's gone both ways with the creative way and has having a business all at the same time. So I think I get a little bit of that from both my parents, the business side and the artist creative side. My dad can't draw a stick figure to save his life. <laughs> I read in your website that when you were in college, you were studying something else at first and then switched. Uh, what, what happened that you made the switch? Actually, I started in fine arts uh, at FIT in 2004 for one semester. And then we had a semester where you could take all these different majors. And you know, because they thought if you entered in fine arts, you might not really know that that's what you you want to do, you might not be an artist, it means maybe you're not sure. So they had us take this course of all little sample classes and I went into communication design after fine arts and then quickly realized two weeks later that I was not a technical or computer kind of person and that the world of advertising was not for me and I couldn't you know, plug in anything or use Photoshop on a computer so I quickly changed my mind and went back to fine arts but that two week major switching decision cost me an entire year of you know trying to change my major back around so I graduated one year later than I was supposed to but it, for the best best choice for sure now um, with abstract art I always find that a little hard to discuss it mm -hmm. what kind of language do you use to discuss your art and what it is the language that I prefer to use is the um, language that I understand and if something makes me feel a certain way or if I want to describe it a certain way because of, of the way that it feels to me or the way that I think somebody else might see it, that's the way I would use to describe it. Um, you know, between balance and tonal values and color and texture and what emotions are um, drawn or derived from that and that's kind of the way that I used to talk about my art, something simple to the point and um, really if it's good or if it's bad, any way that it makes you feel is, is welcome. Now, when I first saw your art, I, mm -hmm. uh, which was in photographs of it rather than the work itself, mm -hmm. I first thought it was either metal or stone. Right. Now, is that an effect you are consciously trying to achieve? Actually, not in particular. Um, not an actual stone or metal kind of effect, but I do use different mediums and stuff like that that gives the surface or the textures a different, um, different uh, I guess, different values and different um, textures like that. So if something is a little bit shinier because of a medium that it might look like metal or something's a little bit duller because uh, I use burlap or something that's a little bit like spackle, then it might mean that it might look like stone. So um, I guess natural is something that I'm definitely striving for, but not maybe metal or stone in particular, but if that's the way it comes out to look. I like the crunch and I like the shine and I like different things to play off each other. Now, when I look at your work, uh, two words that come to mind for me are organic and sensual. Yeah, absolutely. Now, do, you, do you agree with that? If so, can you talk about Definitely. I definitely agree with that. Um, my work, I do like to have that organic feel. I mean, the way I paint, I do a lot of mixing and a lot of pouring and a lot of, um, maybe not dripping, but a lot of different techniques um, other than just using a paintbrush. So that gives it the organic feel. That gives it something that's a little bit more natural, the way you know it's coming out of me as opposed to just putting something, a piece of paper or something like that. And sensual, I definitely think, has to do with the pouring and the movement that I have in the work, um, especially with the different color values. It lends itself to sensual and natural and organic all at the same time. So that's something I like to play with, too. Now, one of the things I wanted to ask you about are your techniques because mm -hmm. obviously it's a lot more than just putting brush on a canvas. Right. Can you go into a little more detail yeah. about the different techniques you're using to get the textures? Absolutely. Um, I think mainly I use paintbrushes as mixing tools. Uh, you know, they used to have those 
tea glasses that you can get at the deli. Now they're in plastic, but they used to be in glasses, which great, make for great drinking glasses as well, but they also make for excellent uh, turpentine mixture glasses. So, you know, I'd pour some um, mineral spirits and galcate or linseed oil and some kind of other mediums and all together and then put in a little paint and use a paintbrush to mix it around and then start to pour um, on the painting, which is typically on the floor, actually always on the floor. I paint around my paintings uh, like in 360 degrees. So if one was on the floor, I'd be standing over it, pouring it, dripping it, tilting it, um, kind of moving it to get the right movement. Uh, on the canvas or wood, sometimes it happens to be too. So are you using different types of palette knives? Or what yeah, palette knives? knives, yeah, it's true. Palette knives, I use scissors. Um, I use my hands a lot. Before, I wasn't using gloves, so I was, you know, really, I like to use my hands, but I realize a lot of uh, health risk and hazard and danger there. So my boyfriend convinced me to start using gloves. So I said, oh, okay, fine, I'll do it, which I'm really happy he did because, you know, I probably have saved myself some skin damage <laughs> and usually a lot of um, my hands and, and uh, just pouring I don't really use a lot of other tools but definitely palette knives too sometimes and one thing with abstract art uh, I wonder you know what guides an artist sometimes for instance if you're painting a figurative painting mm -hmm. if you're painting a tree you, once you start you have kind of a form that leads you on but once you have one color or one stroke on there what is what's in your mind what's guiding you to the next stroke is it something emotional or instinctive or yeah, a little bit of both and also a little bit, um, I'm also looking at different types of colors that I'm using and if I can see something in my mind, uh, you know, different color value that I want to use and I like to use complementary colors a lot too um, and a lot of gray tones in those complementary colors. So I guess the next step is pretty much kind of a mystery because I don't really sketch out a painting before I do it. I could think that I have a, an idea of a series. You know, I like to do series paintings, so I could think I would like to have an idea or a series based on trees, for example. And I would um, use charcoal or different mediums uh, to go on and kind of start pouring and, and seeing where it takes me. And typically do a layer by layer, you know, starting out with a mineral spirit layer, mineral spirit layer first, so it's more of a wash. And and then building up on top of that from lighter colors to darker colors and then maybe some more lighter colors on top of that to get a really push and pull. Now you're pretty new to the art world um, here in New York. What is your take so far of the politics of it and sort of the social scene that you have to work in order to make your way? I'm actually, I find myself to be pretty personable and um, th that helps I think in making contacts with people is that I'm pretty friendly and I'm really genuinely interested in knowing more about what they do and stuff like that and, and then it just kind of goes from there. I think that trying to participate in politics, I would try not to do it. Um, I try, just try to put my work out there as much as I possibly can and if somebody takes to it, that's great. If they don't, that's fine too. At least they had um, you know, something to say to me about it, yes or no and then just see how it goes from there with the contacts. Uh, now, at your recent exhibition, there was one piece that seemed somewhat figurative. Oh, yeah, it was. Uh, as I recall, it was maybe a fetus or a baby. Am I yeah. on the right track? No, you're totally on the right track. It was called the Vagina Painting, and it is two poses. It's an 8x3 uh, oil and canvas painting, and that was actually from a phase that I have that I call my narrative figurative phase or figurative narrative phase. I don't know what you want to call it, but it was like an abstract figurative phase, and I'd like to tell a story and um, with, in that phase, and I was looking at a, a medical book, I think from the 1800s or 1700s, and they, these illustrations of babies being born with all sorts of different um, diseases or, or problems and how they would remove the, the child from the mother, and all these interesting creepy poses, and I just was so drawn to it because it was just so graphic. And so I just started going at it with the painting with that, and and, and that was something that I really enjoyed doing. I showed um, a woman with her, just like a chopped off torso, even like just from here to here, that just showed her legs spread open and a baby pretty much coming out of it. And then over in the other corner of the painting was a baby just coming straight out, like a zoom in, straight out of the vagina. So call that the vagina painting for you. <laughs> 
Now, as we look forward uh, with your work, do you see yourself evolving? And if so, do you have any uh, sense of what directions you'll be going in? Yeah, definitely. And as, uh, as an artist so far, I can already see myself having different phases. And that was something I was really struggling with in the beginning, thinking like, do I have a style? Do I have an identity? And then when I found texture, you know, because I was doing the, the figurative kind of abstract painting before that, and then I moved on, I found texture, and it changed my life. You know, that was a big, big thing for me. And so I thought, oh, this is it. Like, this is what I'm going to do. This is my thing. And then recently, I started a new painting series that rarely, you know, really doesn't involve that much texture. So it's interesting. I mean, I feel like I've done that, and it's something I can always come back to. But my next series is going to be a little bit more based on subtle subtleties, um, subtle colors, subtle uh, nuances in, in gray scale lines and, and things like that that have to do with, uh, with nature. So I'm excited about that next project. Thank you, Alessandra. Now we're going to look at some of Alessandra's work.